Hey everyone, this week we're going to talk about how to set up and use a star tracker for Milky Way astrophotography. So last year I made some videos about my first attempt at doing astrophotography. Some shots of the Milky Way over a beach in Cornwall and I'll put a link up top to one of those videos now. So I'm quite a beginner when it comes to astro Milky Way photography. And as you get more experience, what I've learned is that some people tend to use what is called a star tracker. So a star tracker is a device that you can set on your tripod, attach your camera to it, and it will actually rotate your camera with the Earth's rotation. And the reason why that's necessary is because with astrophotography or any kind of nighttime photography, you need to get a lot of light into the camera. It's obviously very dark. So you can do that by having a very wide aperture or or and a long exposure. So the longer your exposure, the more light coming into your camera and the better the image. You don't have to use such a high ISO and you get all that noise and grain with a high ISO. So it is really good to get that long exposure, but the downside of that is that you're gonna get trails with your stars. The longer your exposure, the longer you're recording and because the Earth's moving, you actually get trails on your stars. So with a star tracker, it will rotate the opposite way to compensate for that movement and hopefully you get pin sharp stars with a long exposure. Recently, Move Shoot Move very kindly sent me their Nomad star tracker to use and review. And there are lots of star trackers out there, some are bigger, more complex, maybe more accurate, but also more pricey. And this one is aimed at people who want a smaller package, more lightweight, or beginners like myself. So this is going to be really good for me, I hope. It's going to be really nice and easy to set up and use. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to run through how I'm going to set this up on my tripod. And then next week, there's going to be a new moon. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it'll be a clear sky. And I'm going to get some Milky Way shots with this. But first, let's talk about what you get in the package from Move, Shoot, Move. So first of all, we've got the Nomad itself. It's fairly compact, not particularly heavy. And that comes in its own carry case. And with that, I also got an Allen key and a little red screw-in device, which we'll talk about more later. There are different packages you can get from Move, Shoot, Move. Some include a polar scope, others have an attachment for your phone. The one I got includes a laser pointer and you get a battery with that and a charger for the battery. So we'll talk about why we need the laser pointer shortly. One of the first things to note is that you're going to need two different tripod heads to mount this. You're going to need one to mount the device onto on your tripod and you're going to need a second one to actually mount onto the Nomad itself. So it doesn't come with a ball head by default or the package I got doesn't come with one. I think there are packages that do include them but I do have a second one. So I've got my three-legged thing Winston tripod here and I'm just going to bring that up and you see here I've got a Surui head mounted on there. This is just a tilt head, so it just tilts back and forward, but that's fine just to mount the Nomad itself on there. So it does have a quick release plate. And one thing I did notice is it comes with a screw on the bottom. So that's a safety stop screw. But on my particular head, the Surui, I wasn't able to mount this into the quick release plate without removing that screw. And I didn't get an Allen key that fitted that screw. So I do have an Allen key that fits it, but just know, or it's important to know, that you're not going to get the Allen key that fits that screw on the bottom. So I'm just going to remove that now. Just screw that all the way out. Like so. And then that's ready to pop into the head, like so. And we can carry on with the rest of our setup now. So we're going to put the laser pointer into this and if I just swivel this around you see on the back here there's a little red screw plate which will just unscrew. You might need to put a screwdriver in there if it's tight. I can just do mine with my fingers. Just need to take that off and into there we're going to put the little red device that we talked about earlier. I 
which is this one. That will just screw into there. And that is going to receive the laser pointer. So they don't tell you this in the book, but you do need to just screw off the end of the laser pointer. And then that will screw into the little red device. Let's just spin that around again on the side. Like so. So there's a hole that goes all the way through the Nomad and when we turn the laser on that should shine through. So be careful with lasers, don't point them at your eyes, don't point them at planes or anything flying in the sky and it does advise you in the instructions not to have it turned on for more than 30 seconds. We're going to talk about using the laser a little bit more later on. So this is the ball head from my three-legged thing Winston tripod and I took that off earlier put on the Surui head because this is going to fit onto the mounting plate now on the front of the Nomad, so just onto here. So what we have to do is unscrew this red ring, like so. That comes off. This uh, plate inside here is where we're going to mount the ball head. So you just need to leave that outer ring on the mounting plate itself and then just screw the three quarter or three eighth inch screw into the bottom of your ball head like so. Just going to give that a little tighten and then we can put this back onto the screw and then just tighten up the red ring like so. So now we've got the Nomad on the Surui head on the tripod and we've got the ball head on the mounting plate on the Nomad. Onto the ball head we can now mount our camera. So I've got the Z7. On here I've got my Sigma 14mm and this is a very heavy lens. So it's going to be a good test for the setup. I'm going to pop that into there, make sure it's nice and tightly locked up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just adjust the ball head to let the camera fall down like that. A, so that you can see me, but also because at this point, when we're actually out, in the field and we're going to get the shot of the Milky Way, we need to align the star tracker to north and we do that by pointing the laser or whatever system you use in the polar scope or your phone at Polaris, that's the north star. And we'll talk in a minute about how to find Polaris. But the reason I've pointed the camera down like this is because when you've got the camera up you can't actually point the laser past the camera. So obviously that's quite important. But the reason I wanted to mount the camera first is because after we've adjusted and aligned the Nomad to Polaris, then we don't really want that to move. So I want the minimum amount of movement possible. So I want to already have my camera mounted on the mounting plate, etc. So that all I have to do is adjust the ball head and bring it back up to where I want to take my shot. So I would put the laser pointer on. Find Polaris, which I'm going to tell you about in a moment. And once we've got that pointing at Polaris, we can then adjust, I'll just turn the laser off, we can adjust the camera to point at the Milky Way. And this is something important that I didn't realise or I couldn't really find any good information on to start with. You don't have to have your camera pointing where you've orientated your laser pointer at. You can have the camera pointing wherever you like. If the Milky Way is over that way, you can point your camera that way, you can point it that way. As long as you don't change the orientation of the Nomad itself, then that's going to work. So let's talk now about how to find Polaris. That's the North Star in the Northern Hemisphere. 
So to locate Polaris, you need to first find the constellation of the Big Dipper. And that looks a little bit like this. And at the bottom there, you'll see there are two stars. So there's Mirac and Dubé. And what you need to do is kind of draw an imaginary line starting at Mirac through Dubé and extend that all the way to the right until you find another star. And that star is Polaris, which is part of the Little Dipper constellation. You can then point your camera at the Milky Way, get your settings, start your exposure, and then you flick the switch on the side of the Nomad to N. Well, I do because I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the South, you switch it to S. And it's as simple as that. That's going to start moving around. It's already moving around now. It's very slow, but that's going to counteract the rotation of the Earth. It's going to move in the opposite direction so that we don't get the blur in the stars. So, like I said, I'm going to take this out next week and try it out the next time you see me. I'll hopefully be out there in the field and we'll have a nice clear sky and we're going to get a good shot of the Milky Way. I'm not going to talk about any of the other settings or how you find the Milky Way or anything like that because I've made videos before on that. I'll put a link up top if you want to go and watch one of those. And yeah, when I get back, I've hopefully got some images I can show you and we can look at how the Nomad performed. Okay, so quite a bit of time has passed and not everything has gone to plan as usual with astrophotography. For a start, there's been probably over a month and two new moons since I recorded some of the previous sections. And during the days around those two new moons, there were no clear skies. It was just cloudy. I got really unlucky. So I had to resort to plan B and I was on holiday recently. I actually got back yesterday. And while I was in France, on a campsite in Normandy, I decided to get a shot there. It wasn't perfect because it wasn't a particularly dark sky zone. I couldn't get a particularly good composition either, just due to the location on the campsite. But as you saw, the image I got was just enough so that we could see some of the Milky Way and we could see how the Nomad performed. Overall, I think the results were pretty good. As you saw earlier, the stars looked fairly sharp. If we compare it to the shot I got in Cornwall last year, you see the stars here are almost the same as the stars in the shot from France. But the key difference is that the shot from France was 247 seconds, which is just a little bit over 4 minutes, compared to the 20 seconds from the shot in Cornwall. And that meant that I could stop down to f3.5, and that's better for a sharper image. It also meant, with the extra light coming into the camera, that I could have a lower ISO. So this was an ISO 1000 compared to ISO 5000 in the Cornwall shot. And that meant a much less noisy image. And yeah, overall I think it's a great bit of kit. Particularly at the price point that this is set up. I think you can get some really good results out of it. I do need to practice more with it. And I'm definitely going to do that. The next new moon, I'm going to get out to a dark sky zone. And I'm going to try this out and get some, some longer exposures and also some shorter ones. And just see what results I can get out of it. I think I can get sharper results, but yeah, I'm still happy with the ones I've already got. So I do recommend checking it out. I'll put some links down below in the comments section if you want to go check out the product for yourself. And thanks again to Move Shoot Move for sending me the Nomad to review. So that's about it for this video. Huge thank you for watching. If you're a regular, as I always say, I really do appreciate it. But if you're not and you want to subscribe, you can just click down there on the big red button or over here on this little picture of me. That way you can keep up to date with what I'm doing. There are new videos Sunday mornings, 10am UK time. 
So I hope you can join me for the next one. Until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.